massive as well. So we're going to make a synth from scratch today, uh, just over the last drums that I made in the last tutorial. So I usually um, just start off with uh, a sub bass, which is just a sine wave, um, and then I just uh, drop that down an octave. Don't forget to cut all of your high end out of the sub, because obviously there's nothing really there in the sub and we, we just want it to fill that low end. Um, you can cut the very bottom, you don't have to, I like to, I think it I feel like it, it's hard to hear, um, but I feel like it just gives everything a little bit more space. I normally cut it around 30 hertz, and it uh, just gives everything a bit more space in the mix. You can always adjust it later. Just drawing in a basic uh, melody here so we can start right into something. Always good just to have a multimeter open, just so you can check Check all your levels. Try and keep everything as flat as possible. Just so you sort of feel, feel the spectrum. So I just duplicated that track. I'm gonna bring the level down a little bit. Try not to work too loud with your levels. Try and try and start off with the with the levels down. So you so you uh, you know where you're at, and it gives you a lot of headroom to to work with throughout the track. So just changing the unison there up to two, dropping it down an octave. Unison basically just creates extra voices, so you'll get multiple uh, signals coming through can make things sound really wide just going to turn on the filter I normally tend to use low 24 and then we can automate this cut off to give it some movement give it some sound don't forget to press B there so that um, it also uh, filters oscillator B. Just mess with the uh, attack here. It was coming in a bit sharp. And the release. Just so it sounds a bit more natural, you know, not so uh, sort of clicky. I like to mess with the detune just bringing that down a lot uh, can change the sound. I'm going to FM from B here, which is probably one of the most free, um, common sort of techniques um, used in Serum. And it just basically modulates the signal from B, from oscillator B, so you can get some really crazy sounds. But we'll, we'll get back into that later. Compressor, really important in Serum. Especially that multi-band button, you can hear the sound completely change when I press that. I don't like the reverb uh, in Serum, so I tend to use separate uh, reverbs. I think this reverb sounds really metallic, um, and uh, I just don't like using it. Sometimes I will, um, if, it, if, it, if it works, it works, but I prefer to uh, have everything going through buses, and um, there's better reverbs out there, to be honest. It's, it's sometimes nice to have it on so you know what the synth is going to sound like. So you always want to try and get some sort of distortion on a synth. Obviously, we're making drum and bass. We want it. We want it to be a bit dirty and just go through the different uh, types of distortion and um, find one that works for you. Uh, just put the drive up a little bit there on the filter. It's a really nice little effect. Little bits of drive as well can give you a lot more headroom and uh, just just uh, brings the the dB down, but still gives you the the same sort of volume. So not too much, but um, not too much that you ruin the sound. But yeah, drive drive is really important with synths. 
So I'm just going to uh, link that envelope to the to the level of uh, oscillator A. Just makes it a bit cleaner and just gives it some some extra movement. Rather than it be so sort of instantly, instantly on and off, and, and sounds really digital, it just just gives it some shape. So you can see playing with the detuning can really give you some uh, some cool sounds. So you can see detune unison two of the most important things you know if you find settings that you like always go back to the detune and the, and the unison because you you might think you've got a dead sound and uh, maybe it just needs a little bit of unison and some uh, detuning and, and it can sound completely different so just gonna put LFO 1 on the cut off and drag that down a bit till you find that sweet spot change the rate you can press this it gives you more parameters uh, so you can change more parameters Play with the resonance as well. The resonance can sort of emphasise um, the sort of curve at the cutoff, um, so it can really bring out some nice. It doesn't always work, um, but it can bring out some nice frequencies in the sort of resonant peak. Um, so I normally, a lot of engineers will say 500 is a bad area, but a lot of my tunes I do look for a peak at five around 500 hertz. I love, I love that sort of 500 hertz area. Um, I know a lot of people are making synths around 1k, but to me, it just sounds like it's missing that meat. Um, so I do it by ear, but I also check the. It's also good to check the multimeter just to make sure that your, um, just to make sure that your ears match what's going on on the screen. Playing with the modulation from uh, oscillator B. Pretty cool little effect there. So obviously I was just checking out you could automate that and um, you could probably get a cool little techie track. Could be a cool little layer to the main synth, sort of filling out the low and mids. Obviously the other, the other synth had no meat to it, it was just a high end top synth so this could blend quite well. Yeah, it sounds much better. So it's, got, it's got all them frequencies, it's filling all the frequencies now. It's, it, it almost sounds a little bit analog, you know? That's, that's like what an analog synth would kind of sound like. And there's no processing. Try and make it try and make it sound as good as possible without the processing. Uh, obviously, we're processing in Serum, but I mean that the external processing. So, like, 
after this we can saturate and we can use OTT and so yeah before you, you, you whack loads of plugins in try and try and get it sounding good in serum first. So that reverb's horrible, you can see there when I took the reverb off, it sounds so much cleaner, such a shit reverb. I don't usually use the phaser but that's kind of sounding pretty cool, it's doing something to that pitch, see that pitch modulation we've got uh, going on really uh, the algorithms are really working nice with that but it's a little bit too phasey maybe just a touch hyperdimension just makes everything a little bit bigger and wider add some sort of dimension to the sound obviously you got unison control there as well Again, doesn't always work, but I'd say about 50% of the time I, I tend to put this on. Let's go see what it sounds like with a sub. So I definitely like that first bass. It's it's got that uniqueness, you know. Um, the second's all right. This could be a tune, but it's just uh, it's a bit it's a bit average. It's a bit boring that second synth. This is cool though. That that pitch that pitch modulation on the uh, on LFO LFO two that we put on is really uh, it's giving that some cool harmonics. You see, just around there, just around 500, 600. Love that sound. And for me, that's what really rings out in the rave, you know. So I always try and get a little harmonic around there. It can be hard to not boost synths, uh, you know. You're supposed to be cutting sounds out to help the mix, but synths are like the main priority in drum and bass. Um, so it's it is tough, uh, and I do tend to boost them a lot when I should be cutting, but if you get any really nasty frequencies then definitely try and cut them out. Because if you get nasty frequencies in your synth, it's going to really sort of take out any space for your drums. Um, you don't want to, uh, you don't want sort of um, harmonics sort of fighting against each other throughout your track, especially with um, especially with the synth and um, your sort of tops tops of your uh, hats and rides are going to be clashing because they, sh they share a lot of the same frequencies yeah so if I whack a reverb on this channel uh, probably chrome verb and uh, just mess with K I'm trying to make a riser so um, nice long decay there So then just bounce that in place. And this this works especially well, and then just reverse it. And then this works especially well because it's the same sound as the synth. So it's all gonna blend together rather than just grabbing a little riser out of splice or something, you know, it's uh it's uh, it's all the same sounds, so it's the same harmony, so there's not gonna be any clashing, it's in the same key. 
So I tend to do this a lot with like pre-snares, um, reverse drums. You can do this with basses, anything. It's a really cool, uh, really cool habit to get into. Just normalising it there, just to make it a bit louder. Fade that end out. A little bit boring just as it is um, so I might add something to that Sound toys is pretty cool, a uh, little plug in, uh, tremolator. Nah, that's better. Gives it some movement, just makes it a bit more interesting, you know, not so sort of basic and simple. We are all just dating.